Hey, Mick John. So hey. we, <laughs> uh, we have a book coming out this Thursday, November 18th. Uh, it is How to Understand Your Sexuality, a practical guide for exploring who you are. It is illustrated by the wonderful Jules Shield and has got a foreword by Erica Moen. So we figured out that we should probably talk about that uh, since the book is coming out soon. <laughs> since the book is coming out this week, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think the readers should know about this book? What should we talk about? Well, um, it's about sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose I suppose that some people might be familiar with the kind of thing it's going to be because how to understand your sexuality is a follow up to our other book, how to understand your gender, which yeah. we wrote about four or five years ago. Um, that was the first book we wrote together. I mean, we had written like chapters and papers together, but not really a book. That was our exactly. First yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember when we wrote it, if we had that thought that we were going to do more with the same title, but we are we're planning a trilogy so this is mm -hmm. part two this is like the empire strikes back i guess for us <laughs> i think so <laughs> that right? and then there's so, how to understand your relationship is coming next uh, which will be mm -hmm. the return of the jedi so exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> i mean they're all good right and and so are these so yeah yeah i i don't think we were planning to write more at the time but, but mm. i know that how to understand your gender pretty much i felt like it wrote itself it really yeah. poured out of us we were so ready for that book um, yeah and then uh, our wonderful at editor uh, Jessica Kingsley uh Andrew actually suggested yeah. that we write more books and um I feel like without to understand your sexuality that also poured out of us but in a different way it's almost I don't know for mm. you but for me I felt like uh the more books we've written together the deep deeper we've gone into yeah. uh our own journey both as kind of co-authors but also our own journey of how do we communicate all of this scholarship and uh, knowledge and personal experiences in a mm -hmm. way that weaves together and makes sense to the reader. And uh, yeah. I feel really happy about this book. How do you feel I about feel, it? <laughs> no, I feel really happy too. And yeah, I think when we did the gender one, I, I often bring gender, sexuality and relationships together because I think they are completely kind of interwoven. And so it felt important to have the, all three in a kind of how to understand format because I think these are things that people are often very confused about. Um, and we're given the idea that they're very simple, you know, just mm -hmm. like particularly often just binary boxes for gender and for sexuality and for relationships. And so, what, yeah, what we're trying to do is really help unpack it the complexity of it all for people explain all the complicated terms and help you know what are the what are the questions and activities that would help you tune into yourself and understand your gender and sexuality and also to really accept it when we live in a, such an un, unaccepting um, culture regarding these things and as you say I think we've just got more and more comfortable with weaving together like I love how they weave together our personal experience but also our wealth of experience like with numerous communities and numerous clients over the years of like we have a pretty good sense of the of this diversity and we have lots of places where we include these multiple experiences to give the sense of like oh you know there's there's really different ways of experiencing sexual fantasies for example or mm -hmm. um really different uh, relationships people have to identifying their sexuality and what words they use so everything we're covering we're trying to get that sense of like it's really okay how you want to do this and there are lots of different ways you can do this and it's about find, finding what works for you absolutely and what I love about our books I'm, I don't know if this sounds conceited saying what I love about our books but here you go what I love about our books is that I feel like they really meet the readers where they're at you know like with yeah. gender how to understand your gender you know it is not a book that's like for trans people or cis people it's really a book about uh, hey, do you want to think about gender both on a kind of cultural, social level and on a personal level? This book is for you, right? Any value mm -hmm. of any gender could pick the book up and find something in it. And we've seen from the review that people have told us that, you know, people yeah. of different genders have gotten a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. And how to understand your sexuality, I feel is similar. And, um, and it's also a little bit different because, I, again, I feel like sexuality is such a vast landscape. And yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I really felt there wasn't a book that spelled out like what even is sexuality, how uh, like mm. 
our sexual identity different from attraction or desire or behavior? How do I know mm. what sexuality I am, right? In a way, both gender and yeah. sexuality, and we could even say relationships, right? We are mm-hmm. coming into almost these molds that are out there in dominant mm-hmm. discourse, you know, through media, through familial discourse, through legislation, all of these different mm-hmm. structures. And we're coming into those molds. And then if we don't fit into those molds, we can feel it can cause distress. We can feel really alone and feel really Mm. lost. You know, how do you know if you're asexual or how do you know if the fantasies you're having are common or not? And sexuality is a bit like money and religion, right? Nobody wants to (laughs) talk about it. Um, So I love that in our book, we really... um, kind of follow a similar pathway to the gender book in that we look at how the world views sexuality and then invite people to consider the background, their current experiences and so on. Um, and also really invite the reader to think about sexuality in a different way and to really take on, like you said, the vast landscape. You know, we try to be as inclusive as possible, even including ecosexuality mm-hmm. and including different experiences, you know, not just solo sexuality, not yeah, just other people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's really important. And of course, you know, it's kind of hard to get that in the word sexuality on the cover, but we unpack that quite early on in the book that we're definitely including the whole spectrum from mm-hmm. asexuality all the way to allosexuality, as well as including all the different LGB, you know, and yes. different kind of sexualities around gender of attraction, but also including all these other spectrums of sexuality that aren't always covered you know in terms of kind of kink and Mm -hmm. vanilla sexualities and you know basically everything all of what ways of understanding desire and fantasy and Mm -hmm. sexual expression sexual practices as well as identity it's not so yeah it's a lot beyond identity I suppose which is might be what people think it's that kind of what box do you check on the questionnaire it's a lot a lot bigger than that Exactly. And, and I feel that that's where the, there wasn't really a resource that I could even suggest to clients, even as a sex therapist, to be mm. like, here's a really kind of comprehensive look, right? Because the way those books are like, these books are about understanding specific types of identity, or these books are around like behavior, right? This is how, yeah. uh, you know, to understand your body or how to orgasm and all those kind of things. And often, those books mm-hmm. are not always inclusive of like trans and non-binary folks either. And so in some ways we were pretty ambitious. How do you feel really <laughs> that like <laughs> uh, fulfilling that brief of really um, trying to be um, as welcoming as possible of well, folks? That's mm-hmm. what we try and do, right? I mean, it's like, you know, this is, this is the book to start with, I suppose, you know, start with how to understand your gender. If you don't know where you're at with gender, once yeah. you've got through it, you might be like, whoa, I really identify, you know, with this kind of non-binary gender. So you can go and read, you know, now luckily that our books, you know, aim specifically at that, you know, or, or, you know, you get really engaged with feminism and there are a number of feminist books you could go read. But how to understand your gender could be this really good starting point if you know nothing about this or you're really quite mm-hmm. confused by the terrain out there. And the same here, I think you know, obviously once you've read this book, if then what you want to do is think more about your sex life and how to experience pleasure, we've referenced a bunch of places you can go and look at that. If you, if you want to get really involved with a specific community like lesbian community or kink community, again, we've flagged up, you know, more resources and, and places you can go to find out. So that, but, but there aren't those books that take that really broad approach generally. I think that's, that's where we, we come in of like thinking about, I think particularly like the young person who's exploring mm-hmm. this for the first time, I guess we're trying to write for, but also for the kind of older generation who feels lost in the new terminology. I feel like mm-hmm. hopefully this is a safe enough way in for those folks, you know, and yeah, people of just any age or stage who are questioning even, you know, even I suppose what we're making a point all the way through that sexuality is so fluid and changes over our lives. And we use ourselves as an example several times that, you know, if you've hit your midlife crisis and your sexuality is suddenly in question, this is a good book for you as well, right? Oh, absolutely. And I remember, you know, my colleague Sarah Myers and I did the uh, research study around uh, older folks and sexuality. And one of the things that came up is that people sometimes do look at sex and sexuality in a different way as they age. And, uh, you know, not just in terms of aging, in terms of body processes, but also aging within culture and understanding Mm. relationships in a different way. And I think that's where that connection between like gender and sexuality and relationship for me comes in. And they're also connected, which I guess is also 
uh, what we explored in Life is Unbinary, Binary, our other book, yeah. which really mm -hmm. goes from sexuality to gender, you know, to bodies, to relationship, to emotions, to thinking, because mm -hmm. those things are not ever just about one thing, I feel. They're yeah. about the way we look at the world, the way we interact with one another, right? Right. So in a way, if you want to go even more broad, start with Life is not Binary, because that covers True. a bit about all these things and why none of them are binary and then mm -hmm. after you've read that if you're like oh the gender stuff I really want to dig into more the sexuality stuff now we're trying to provide the books that do a whole book on those those themes right and then Absolutely. our book hell, our book hell yeah self-care is more like a map to all of the ways you can look after yourself while you do these kinds of explorations so they Absolutely. kind of all fit together yeah, yeah. They do. And when you think, you know, you mentioned hell yeah, self-care, that's a trauma-informed workbook. And in a way, mm -hmm. we talk about trauma quite a bit in our how to understand your sexuality, probably yeah. more than in how to understand your gender. And I think, um, you know, and of course, if people want to look at the intersection of gender and trauma, that's my book, oh, Gender I feel, Trauma. I feel like right? someone's written a really good book about gender and trauma already. Like, who would that be? I, you wrote the foreword <laughs> for it. So I mean, that, that's me. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. then I think that because we did, you know, I had gender trauma mm. and then we did the kind of a trauma informed workbook together mm. that really came through in how to understand your sexuality. And we do talk about the impact of trauma on sexuality in this book. We do mm. try to look at the fact that um, much as we want our um, ourselves to be able to experience pleasure and connection and the er erotic kind of charge in whatever way, right, even mm. It doesn't have to be without a folks, like we said. Um, many of us experience trauma that gets in the way of us yeah. feeling that aliveness. That's probably the best way to put it. The sexuality yeah. for me is about a feeling of aliveness and connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what I love most about this book. And that's also when we were coming up to write it, well, for, for a start, we had to write it over Zoom during the pandemic, which that was, was really different really different for us because we usually yeah. do writing retreats together to do these and it was it, uh, you know both we were really glad we could do it at all and it was really sad not to be with each other in person to write this one but I think as we'd led up to it I kind of felt like oh that's okay because it's going to be a bit pain by numbers this book you know it's like we've already written how to understand your gender both of us have studied sexuality for like 20 30 years each you yes. know we've written about this so many times it's it's not going to be you know kind of that like mm -hmm. groundbreaking and what surprised me was I think it really it, it isn't like any book I've written on sexuality before and I've written a few yeah. because it's got that trauma it, it's got this balance all the way through of like here's here's sexuality it can lead us to liberation it can lead us to belonging and community it can lead us to some of the most amazing experiences it's possible for humans to have and it's a site of intense trauma for most of us whether we're traumatized in our sexuality or whether we experience trauma in other ways like cultural trauma and developmental trauma that shows up in relation to our sexuality you know it's always that bothness again life isn't binary it's like and and what we've got is that balance through the book which again you'll struggle to find you'll find really good books out there on sexual trauma and you'll find Absolutely. you know great kind of sex positive kind of books about how wonderful sexuality can be and how to own your sexuality but rarely will you find the two as much of both in the book and that we're never trying to emphasize the one at the cost of the other which you can get that sense sometimes that you have to be really shiny and happy about sexuality or it's kind of this this super site of trauma and there's no potential to be shiny and happy mm -hmm. because the, the trauma is so intense and it's like how do we how do we accept that we're all traumatized in this place to some extent and also it has these potentials for us and how do we how do we find those potentials when it is a site of trauma absolutely I do really love how we walk that balance and we often do walk the balance in our books also like hey here's an idea and also here's how this idea could be seen as problematic you know it's yeah. like we talk about ecosexuality but we're also like hey and also look at the work of Dr. Kim Tolbert to look at the connection between indigeneity and this mm -hmm. kind of very like in some way, white Western idea of ecosexuality and what can they, you know, is there a correlation between the two or not? So I think mm. that's something that we try to do a lot in all our books, including this yeah. one, is that bring the nuance, right? Bring that mm -hmm. nuance, that inclusivity, that both end um, 
And I think that really speaks to some people, but I also wonder sometimes if it's not, um, you know, this is the way enough yeah. for other people. You know what I mean? There is no, uh, to stay with our geek metaphors, but mix them up a little bit. You know, there is no, this is the way, like the Mandalorian. Yeah. It's like, here is a way and here's <laughs> another way and here's possibly another way and another way yeah. and another way. And whoever you are is going to be okay. And this community and the framework for you to understand yourself. And I mm. think that's different too, sometimes from how books talk well, about sexuality. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, this is, I think we've had something of a grumble about this, this kind of thing in the past of like, we're really insistent that we want to write books that for everyone you know, because these divides are not necessarily helpful. It's really good if we can understand the complexity and diversity of all of our sexualities and all of our genders, rather than thinking, oh, that stuff's for, for gay people or that stuff's for trans people. Mm -hmm. So we're insistent on writing books that cover everybody. And, that, and that's tough when books are often marketed in this way of like two specific groups, yeah. um, because we're not willing to, we're not re willing to write the heteronormative book that leaves out all the queers, but we also don't really want to write, write the queer book that doesn't speak to heteronormativity for, for people who are there, you know. And um, similarly, as you say, a lot of self-help books tend to be sold on the one true way. You know, that's almost yeah. like what you're expected to do. Is say, like, I found this thing that's better than all those other things. You know, here it is. Whereas we, we kind of are saying, well, this is this is different to everything else out there, but it's different not because it sells you the one true way, but because it says different things work for different people. And um, we want to get away from that mentality that makes everyone feel bad about themselves and their sexuality. So we are not saying, you know, everyone has to do it this way or that way. We're trying to lay out all the options so people can find their own path, which is so important again in the trauma literature, that that sense of like being empowered to find your own path and what works for you rather than the sense that somebody else could ever tell you the way to go, right? Absolutely. And and in some ways I feel like um uh, you know, our approach is, doesn't serve capitalism very well. You know, it's not how to understand your sexuality TM. It's like, yeah. you, know. <laughs> you need to buy a lot of things. Uh, yeah, buy yourself lots of products and then you'll be okay. No. <laughs> exactly. It's like, here's what we learned, you know, from community. Here's what we learned from scholars. Here's what we learned mm -hmm. from a different community. Here's kind of what we heard, you know, yeah. From here, yeah, or people who have experiences very different from our own. And, you know, and doing our best to bring those as best as yeah. we can you know through our own positionality and also being very clear about our yeah. own positionality but there isn't like a this is the way to gender yeah. sexuality or self-care tm and, and i yeah. wonder sometimes if that's uh, you know a uh, plus and a minus well, I, mean, I guess the minus <laughs> is that not as marketable for the new york times i don't know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But if the New York yeah. Times wants to talk to us, we'd be very happy to talk to them. <laughs> so happy. And if yeah. you want copies of our books, I'm ready to send them to you. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, to anybody who wants like review the copies of our books or wants to talk to us about our book or mm. wants us on their podcast or TV show. Yeah. Hey, we span both the UK and the US. Uh, you know, I'm bilingual. I can even like talk to folks in Italian. So take your pick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely <laughs> look at us serving capitalism going yes talk about our book review it thank you <laughs> yeah yeah but I feel proud of it for those reasons you know and I don't I think that's something you and I hopefully would never do is to sort of think what's the most marketable book it's much more like <laughs> what would well I mean I think we even we even dedicate it to our younger selves don't we, we sort of say yeah this book's dedicated to our younger selves you could have really used a book like this and to all the people who helped us learn more about sexuality along the way so it's mm -hmm. very much this that's what's driving us really it's like we just want some resources out there that are genuinely helpful and hopefully really kind um, yeah. as well and really get how um, scary this this can be to navigate right oh absolutely I got a little teary actually when you reminded me of the you know the dedication we put in the book mm. because I remember being so confused and so scared and how terrifying you know um, in my early 20s even to open up about feeling that I was queer and either you know feeling that 
pushback because mm -hmm. also being bisexual and biphobia and bi erasure, by being told that I was confused or um, it was such a confusing time, even to understand mm. kind of what healthy sexuality looked like, because I'm not really having had the education and the messages around it. And I, th I think you are absolutely correct. We never think what's the most marketable book. We're like, <laughs> what are we working on right now? And yeah. what do we feel we want to share with people? You know, I mean, gender, I think we both worked on for like a good solid 30 years, not, yeah. not just individually, but also, you know, like through our studies and our scholarship mm -hmm. and our research. And I think that again and again, we come back to those themes in our lives that have been important to us mm -hmm. and that we've gone deeper with. And, and we kind of want to share what we've learned yeah. because I don't want anybody else to feel so lost and alone as I was. Um, I completely I agree. Yeah. yeah. And for me, the thing that really struck me this time around, and, and you're right, it, every time we write on these things, it deepens. And I'm surprised with just how much more there is to know and then to share. But, um, you know, for me at that those ages, it was about complete separation between my sexual fantasies and the desires there and mm -hmm. then my sex life with other people because my sex life with other people was all about just trying to do what was normal you know and be in the kind of relation sexual relationships that were normal whereas mm -hmm. the stuff that was showing up in my fantasies and desires were really different to that and I just think so many people feel they have to keep those separate and may not even admit to themselves or to others that they do keep those separate so um you know and that, that's not saying that we necessarily have to always bring them together either but I just want wanted to write a book that really got that you know really got that it's it's okay to fantasize about the things you fantasize and desire the things you desire and it's also okay to bring those things into um sex with other people if that is something you want to do um, absolutely mm -hmm. yeah and yeah and I'll, you know as well as that split internally sometimes I think there's also a disconnect right this idea that Again, sexuality is so private. We don't talk about it with anybody else. You know, um, mm. maybe we talk about it like spiritual or religious leader, maybe not, or maybe intimate partners. But it's so important for sexuality just to breathe and being able to talk about it. Like as a parent, mm. you know, I, mm. I wanted uh, my kids to understand about sex and sexuality in age appropriate ways. And there are age appropriate ways to talk about it all through and now that my oldest kid you know is an adult basically a young adult I feel like that laid such a strong foundation you know to be able to have conversations that um, rather than stay in that embarrassment and I feel other mm. people who have nobody to turn to because yeah. they feel like you can talk to your parents about this right this is a mm. topic and maybe you talk to peers and they don't have all the information um, mm -hmm. And so where do you go? Right. And so in yeah. some ways, I hope this book is like that kind friend that mm -hmm. young people can turn to, but maybe even like parents, if they're like my mm -hmm. child has a sexuality that's so different from mine that I don't understand. Um, this is going to be a, book, a really good book for people to be like, oh, OK, there is so much of a vaster landscape than my own experience of sexuality. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. And I was thinking from that, I really like the, the last chapter of the book that we did uh, mm. about taking your sexuality out into the world, because we do a lot around, you know, who who is useful to talk to about your sexuality, if you're struggling with different kind of professionals that you might engage with, but yes. also about community and what communities can open up, but also what they can close down for people, because I think there's a whole whole lot going on at the moment around communities and how mm. helpful they can be and how we really need collectivity and also about communities and how restrictive they can be um, and how painful it can be to be in you know communities that restrict you or to be ostracized from communities and so mm -hmm. we try to really like really like pull, sort of unpack all of that and help again guide people to think about what kind of communities and what kind of um professionals or role models or whoever feels feel safe enough what what again who who will help expand your potentials um versus who will kind of contract them um and how you might engage with that absolutely and i think that fits really well with this idea that we're gonna have like a way right it's not like mm -hmm. good with sex educator or sex therapist it's like 
here are many, many options of people who work in the field of sexuality, including sex workers, somatic sex therapists, sex therapists and, and educators and so on. And also, you know, peer mm-hmm. support and community um, and how complex it is, which yeah. <laughs> which is probably why our next book is going to be how to understand your relationships, because uh, yes, uh, creating relationships is, and maintaining them is so complex. <laughs> I, and, I am right? so excited for this book. So <laughs> the, the funny thing about these books, you know, like if, if you're not a writer, you might not be familiar with how it all works, but you know, we, we write them about a year before, you know, so we wrote this one in the pandemic, like this was last yeah. November, we wrote it exactly this time last year, actually. We did. Um, and so we're thinking about the next one at the moment and then this comes out and we're like oh what are we doing that one you know because yeah we're really like hoping in the next year that we'll be able to get together in person once or twice to write how to understand your relationships and I guess from the pandemic particularly for me mm-hmm. so much about relationships has come up and about how hard it is and uh, situations where everyone's trauma it's, it, it's going to be all about trauma because trauma and relationships just <laughs> go, go together right because it's our trauma patterns that play out in relationships that make them so difficult and I feel like so many people it's been ramped up so we see people boundary crossing more or getting angry at people and critical around people more or going into you know more like fawn patterns and trying to please people more or you know getting really frozen and and isolated and all of those things I don't know it seems to me had been even ramped up during the pandemic because everyone's background level of trauma has been so high so a lot of relationship struggles whether people have been locked in on their own or whether they've been locked in with somebody else or whether these things have played out in their communities and and often all of the above so that's what we want to wrangle with in the next book right is like how do we understand our relationships again the potentials of them for you know for being wonderful places of love and belonging and also even of healing and transformation but also we all carry so much relational trauma on a cultural level and also from our own kind of upbringings and how do we work with that like in relation with each other and in relation with ourselves is is kind of where we're going I think. Absolutely and it's I'm so excited and it's also going to be so complex you know right in the pandemic for example as a disabled person I know a lot of other disabled folks have talked about this really that relationship between disabled communities and abled folks, but also within yeah. disabled community, you know, white folks and black folks and indigenous folks and, and brown folks, like we all have different experiences, even though some of our experiences kind of interlock and overlap. And, and mm-hmm. I feel like the pandemic has amplified all that. And what yeah. I'm excited about the next book is that it's not going to be able to understand your relationship, like romantic relationship or sexual relationship is mm-hmm. also friendships parenting you know we've seen in the Mm. pandemic like you know my mom was really um not sure about the vaccine and there's a lot of kind of uh suspicion of the medical establishment in kind of southern Mm. italy and so i had to really talk her through the science right there was a lot of pushback in italy as well as in the u.s a lot of suspicions right of the medical Mm. industrial complex and so all of that has really impacted our relationship with our parents, with our children, yeah. with our neighbors, with, with the institutions we might work for, um, our friendships, our yeah, gatherings. These things, keep, yeah. these things keep coming up and like the the kind of automatic seeming trauma kind of response is polarized, split, yes. you know, us and them. And, you know, this is something we looked at a lot in Life Isn't Binary, but I suppose you know and how to understand your relationships we're going to be trying for like how can we relate with each other without just doing that without separating self and other which is so tempting to do but to somehow to somehow navigate often these really big gulfs without without just re-traumatizing each other which is which is how often it goes yeah Absolutely. And without sacrificing our humanity, right? Yeah. Because often yeah. when people think, oh, you know, let's not be polarized, there's always a both end. Yeah. Sometimes the both end is like at the cost of minoritized folks, right? Yeah. And so I feel like it's so, and I know that we talked about that a little bit in Life is Unbinary. Yeah, in, um, the relationships chapter, I think. But we're really going to go deep in here, yeah. like how, yeah. you know. And I think we both come from a place of like relationships can be beautiful and essential. And, you know, we don't really 
cap people off or cancel people and also you know we come from more of we a, do have to be honest and say what's going on and be real exactly. yeah you know and yeah, also the, how do we have boundaries and protect ourselves yeah. and keep ourselves yeah. safe you know and acknowledge yeah. power and all of that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I've been thinking about it with the the book I'm writing at the moment on mental health that so much so much trauma is caused by this combination of like violence and silence so mm-hmm. some kind of non-consent some kind of injustice and then the gaslighting around it or the minimizing or the denial Absolutely. and that combination of you know the thing happened and then you're not held and you're not heard um, about that thing again whether that's you know developmentally or whether that's culturally and so the it feels like the answer needs to be something that includes kindness to counteract the violence and also deep honesty to counteract the the, the silence and I think for me that would be kind of like a central thing through this book it, and it isn't always easy you know so often we sacrifice honesty for kindness yeah. um, or kindness for honesty you know we can be really really honest in, in quite a critical and even cruel way or we can be really kind and kind of a nice you know but not very real way and neither of those things tends to very, help much in relationships but both of those things is very informed by relational trauma so I think we're going to be looking at that like how do we how do we in wider culture and in our personal relationships and in our relationship with ourselves cultivate both kindness and honesty and not like sacrifice one for the other absolutely my my good uh, friend and Chris Dwayne Donald Engstrom Reese would call that the cold part of compassion you know that compassion mm. is not always like warm and fuzzy but there is that piece of that cold art of compassion is really about being relentlessly honest with ourselves and one another in a mm. way that like because I care I am yeah. being really honest about your impact of what you're saying. And so that we can stay in relationship, mm. but then we need to be able to hear one another. We need to be able to believe that no matter how good people we are or how good our intentions we are, we always have the power to impact other people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and so that, I think for me, that's that cold art to compassion. How do you bring both together and how do mm. we see kind of, um, honesty and feedback as a gift while also being able to have discernment about I'm going to be mm. like, where is this pe- person coming from why are they saying this are other people saying this or is this really different than mm. what I hear from other folks right it's so complex I can't really wait to is. dive into it uh, mm-hmm. me too yeah and I think thinking about shame as well and like how do we how can we say these things in non-shaming ways and also how mm. can we hear them in non-shaming ways when so many of us are so steeped in shame again from development mental trauma and from the culture that's so shame-based you know I think that's going to be another thing <laughs> we're just like we'll just we'll just stay on on the video and just keep writing this book yeah shall we? basically <laughs> we're just like writing this book as we go so maybe yeah. we should go back to understand your sexuality which is the yeah. book that's coming out now November this 18th this 2021 one. this one yeah. and it's got beautiful illustration by Jules Shield and also mm. it's got a lovely forward by Erica Moen. Do you want to talk a little bit about the forward? Because I really love it. Oh, this. that was so lovely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Erica does that Oh Joy Sex Toy mm-hmm. comic, which is amazing online. So yeah, check that out if you're not familiar with Erica's work. And um, yeah, just really lovely to have that forward. Um, yep. Like I've, I think the publisher sent it to a few folks to see what they thought of it and they all said some really nice things so we've also got Juno Roche, Cindy Darnell and Justin Hancock on the back saying yes. nice things about it as well. So, Do you want to yeah. share like some of those nice okay. things that people said there on the book cover because I don't oh, have the book yet. <laughs> as, as always with Juno it's like a complete like it's very hard to keep a dry eye while you read this one. From the outset this book feels gentle, kind and embracing. As I was reading, I knew the authors cared deeply about my journey through the book, and that's rare indeed. I know, that's so good. Oh. Cindy Darnell says, goldmine of wisdom, helping us break down and understand the struggles of sex in our everyday lives. And Justin Hancock says, this is such an interesting and engaging book. Meg John and Alex do a fantastic job at helping you to understand and articulate your sexuality. Oh, that's quite lovely. Yeah. So if you think there might be something in this book for you, please uh, get the book from it's in paperback and it's available from your favorite local uh, independent bookstore or from any other store that you usually buy either paperback or electronic books from. Yes. Anything else? Please do. 
we should share before uh, we go back to I don't understand your relationship <laughs> like Friday. But anything else we should share about I don't understand your sexuality with our fabulous uh, listeners. Well, yeah, I mean, just it has a very similar structure to how to understand mm -hmm. your gender. But just if you're wondering what the contents are, we say we cover what is sexuality. Then we cover how the wider world views it. Then we cover your background. So how it was for you growing up, then your current experience. Then we cover how you live your sexuality, like your body, your desire, your practices, your identity. Then there's a whole chapter on sexuality and relationships, um, yeah. you know, how we navigate it with the people we're sexual with, but also in our other relationships. And then it's that one about taking your sexuality out in the world and finding community and role models if you want to. So those are the those are the themes that are covered. Absolutely. And if you think that those themes are familiar because you've read out to understand your gender, you would be correct. We really try to keep the similar map, but the content mm. of the book is different. But there are yeah. some exercises where you can move across the two books. And so mm. if you've done some mapping of your gender in order to understand your gender, there's going to be some mapping of your sexuality now to understand your sexuality. And then you can kind of bring them together. So I think yeah. it's also a really lovely um, kind of they're lovely instruments to really go deeper into your mm. own kind of uh, different identities, different desires, different journeys. Because we know that while gender mm. and sexuality, you know, uh, in some ways are separate constructs, they're also really deeply connected, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So when we've got all three, you know, you can be really thinking out what is my gender? How do I want to express it through my sexuality? How do I want to live my sexuality through my relationships? It's like mm -hmm. you'll have, you know, you'll have how, how do you know, how does gender trauma play out in my relationships? Yeah. You know, how you can you can kind of do that linking them all together. And like you say, even build up like I don't know a scrapbook or you know oh something God. with all these activities you know that and you know you, if you wanted to I think we even said in the introduction you can read yes. each book separately but you could like read chapter one of each of the three books all together and do like the chapter one stuff all together for all three mm -hmm. and then chapter two all together so hopefully it gives you a lot of scope to play with if, if you like them and you want to engage with all three in that way absolutely but mm. don't wait for how to understand your relationship to come out in <laughs> yeah. 2023 get how to understand your sexuality now in 2021 because we have to survive under capitalism and also <laughs> if you buy the book that it shows our publisher that there is kind of a, an audience and how to understand mm. your gender recently finally became an audiobook that's something that mm. you know we feel really passionate about yeah. we found those books to be in different formats. So how to understand your gender is now available as a paperback in English, as a paperback in Spanish, as a paperback in French and as an audiobook. Mm. And so please uh, also buy out to understand your sexuality so that we can have this book be in all this wonderful formats. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, don't wait for how to understand your relationship. <laughs> Get it now. And then, well, it's just that, like Star you know, Wars, isn't it? You wouldn't wait to Return of the Jedi is out before you watch Empire Strikes Back. You'd watch right. Empire Strikes Back and then look forward to the Return. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, I don't know. Now, uh, you know, the streaming services have got used to like binge watching. I don't want people to be like, I'm going to wait until the last, <laughs> yeah. you know, the last book and read them all together. No, no, get the books now because that's how <laughs> publishing works. And that, that's how we get to write more and get offered <laughs> more contracts. So. <laughs> Oh, well, we hope you enjoy it. And yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for reading if you do read. And yes. Thank, and thank you a lovely co-author for another <laughs> amazing experience of writing a book together and thank you Mac John lovely co-author and writing partner I love writing with you mm. and thank you listeners and viewers because we're going to put this on a couple of platforms and if you review books or you have your own podcast or your own tv show invite us we love to talk about those topics I think we're pretty good at talking about those topics and so um i'm just saying that you could have some lovely like trans non-binary queer folks talk about those things and uh, that could be refreshing <laughs> especially if you're <laughs> a, a major outlet let's say <laughs> like the new york times not that i really want to see my book in the new york times but i kind of do either that <laughs> or oprah's book club those are my aspirations <laughs> Putting them out there, people, so you can manifest or something. <laughs> oh, thank you, Alex. 
Well, thank you for another wonderful book. I can't wait to start uh, writing How to Understand Your Relationships next spring. Probably we'll start writing it so in a few months. Yes. And in the meantime, go get How to Understand Your Sexuality. It's really wonderful. And if you haven't gotten How to Understand Your Gender, it's a good time. Buy them both. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.